Now that we've gone over kind of the generic database stuff, let's go ahead and actually design the database for the application we're going to be using. And so we can already put in there the information that we, we have. So we have made at this point a users table. And in that users table, it's got an ID. And we've got a name. And we've got an email. And we have a password digest. So that's what we have so far. But we don't know what else belongs in, in here. So let's uh, do that together. We do know, since we're doing a ride share for various churches, that we probably are going to need to have a churches table. Let's get this here. Churches table. And we're probably going to need a um, rides table. So let's edit that one. And this is our rides. There we go. So the rides are provided to churches, but if you um, think about many churches, we also need to know that uh, which service that ride is, is provided for. Is it the 9 o'clock service? Is it the Saturday service? Uh, who knows? So we've got uh, rides for various churches and, and services. So let's go ahead and let's close this down. So there we go. We can see the pop up there. Put some relationships in here and then we can put some attributes in here. So let's start off with when we create a church. When a user creates a church, they are um, going to want that information to stay. They don't want anyone to be able to update that information, but they should be able to update it. So we need to be able to identify which user uh, created that church uh, entity. So let's go to the church and to, to the users and let's edit our, our churches field. Uh, that is a, a foreign key right there. And let's also add in, because we always have it in Rails, our ID field, which is going to be our, our primary key. And let's see if we can do that. So now we, we know which, and let's, uh, let's change this to a more readable name. Let's call it uh, created by. So now we know who made this. It's going to have its own uh, primary key. Uh, but we also uh, know that users attend a church. So there's a, there's a different relationship going on here where users attend a church. And so let's uh, follow the Rails convention here. And this would be church ID, the the foreign key. It only can be an ID for a particular church. It's not the primary key, it's, the, it's a foreign key. So now we know that a church has many attendees, but only created by a, a single user. And similarly, a church is going to have many services. So we're going to say that the service is in many churches. So let's go here and go ahead and update this. We have a church ID that it belongs to. And we it should also have an ID that's the primary key. There you go. So now we have users who attend particular services at a, a church. And this is um, something that you, could be debatable. Should this relationship here be a user attends a particular service, or does the user attend a particular church? 
that's tough because some people switch around so we probably don't want to constrain that too much uh, the rides on the other hand have to be to a particular service because if I'm catching a ride with someone else and they're going to the 8 o'clock service and I'm going to the 10 o'clock service that doesn't help me so it's very important that we go ahead and make sure our rides are there so let's edit this as well this is service ID and we need our ID is a primary key. There we go. So now we have rides being provided to particular services. And let's put this down a little bit so we can see everything. Now we just need the connection between users and rides. Uh, and the, this again is, is tricky, it's kind of a, a decision but what I think the best way to do this is actually uh, end to M, a many to many relationship between the two. So um, the users have rights. So let's go ahead and edit this. This table name should be, um, let's call it user rides and again our IDs are going to be singular that's just the Rails convention because it's not a bunch of rides that that particular key is referring to it's a specific ride and it's not any all users or multiple users it's a specific user so now we have users giving rides uh, but but this is just being on the ride. We probably also need to know who is actually providing the ride. So what we're going to do is say that um, a user provides a, a ride. And now we need to understand how we're going to do the ride. Is this ride a periodic thing that's always available? Or is this a, a specific day and time and because we can't rely on someone always providing a ride or always having availability I think it's important that our rides be for a specific day and for a specific time so that means a user could provide m many rides over the course of a semester or uh, a year whatever so a user is going to provide many rides and now I'm going to call that the um, the driver uh, of the and so now we see uh, it might be easier let's keep it uh, so it'll be easier with rails let's just keep it user ID because then rails will know what that refers to in fact, we can probably do that up here as well. Let's keep that user ID because then Rails will know exactly what that's connected to and we don't have to do a bunch of extra information with that. So this reflects the, the relationships that we want to, to put in, in place here that we've got users, churches, rides, services, and we've got our associative entity here. So let's uh, go ahead and add some attributes to, to fill the, this out. And so we've got our, our user, name, email, uh, password, and the church that they uh, attend. Now that one should be an optional church because we um, actually this can be null there we go 
it's an optional church because if you're seeking a ride, maybe you go to a bunch of different churches and you don't associate yourself with a ride yet. And so it's an important to be able to have that zero non-null characteristics there. Um, but some information we might also want is the phone number. Let's put that in. And let's make that. Uh, and we can make it a string. It doesn't matter. And we also want to potentially provide a picture that people could see who we're talking about. So let's make that a blob binary object. And what we're going to say is that the name is not null and the email is not null. That should be unique. And our phone number, we'll let it be null, but it definitely needs to be unique. We don't want two people with the same phone number. And so that, I think, describes what we want our, our users to look like. So this up here, maybe like that. Let's go to our church's table. In here, what we want to be able to know is, is the name of the church. And that definitely needs to exist. And uh, it might not be unique, it depends upon how big of an area you do. Maybe we want to have a picture of the church. So another blob here. And maybe we want to have a pointer to the website for that church. And it might also be nice to provide a short description and in case there's some interesting information that that can be shared for this website that the church website doesn't make sense. So we've got that. We, we may also, when we're displaying a church, want to show the people who regularly attend that church, but we have that through this association right here. And we probably also want to show a list of all the services for that church, but again, we've got that through this uh, association right here. So let's go ahead to our services. Make sure we have our church ID, our ID. And now, what do we need to know about our services? We need to know the day of week. And uh, that definitely cannot be null. We need to know the start time of the service. And so that's going to be a time. We need to know the uh, finish time, even if that's approximate. And of course, these are not null. Very important. And we probably need to know the location. Now, notice I put the location in the service rather than the church because it's possible that a church has multiple services at different locations. So it's important that we we have that location in here. So let's see here. That gives everything we need about the service and then we for our service we may want to list all the people who are providing rides but again we've got that through this association so we don't have to list it specifically so uh, finally let's do our, our rides here we need to know uh, the date of the ride itself and we need to know when the ride is going to leave. Oops. We need to know when the ride will return. We need to know 
at least how many seats are available, but I think it, it, it might be interesting. Some people say, I'm bringing these three people, but I've got room for one more. So you might say, oh, that's packed root car. So, so it might nice be able to say number of seats, uh, as well as, and this could be an integer, and this would be seats <coughs> available. And that definitely needs to not be null. And you probably want the location, um, the location where you uh, meet the, the meet location where you get picked up and, and drop off. And <clears throat> you might also want to know any information about the car that's being driven. You know, your make model size, it's a van or it's a mini uh, small vehicle, that might make a difference. But, it, you know, that could be optional. So that allows us to have all that information. So let's try to get that all on screen there. So now we have all the information that we need. Our users go on these rides, or they drive people to specific services for churches that they attend. And so this should be very helpful. Um, let's see here. We need to make some optional things here. So let's do this. A A user can have a church, but does a church, does it have to have a church? This, this should be uh, optional over here. Um, and there, there should be some other optional ones here as well. A, a user doesn't have to provide a ride. And um, users don't have to go on rides if they can't find a ride or something like that. I'm going to pause a little bit so I can figure out how to set those as optional. All right, so let's make this optional. So I'm going to double click on that relationship right here and if I go to foreign key the users is mandatory but the churches is optional so you can see that becomes optional right there and again a, a user may never actually get on a ride and so that may be optional right there and a ride may never actually have any users. There we go. And a service may end up not actually providing any rides. So there we go. Now we've got everything proper. Users don't have to take rides. Rides don't actually have to have any users with them. A user doesn't have to be responsible for a church. And a user doesn't have to be a regular attender of a church. So that's where all of those optional things are in. Finally, our service might not have any rides provided for it. So this is the ERD that we're going to use to drive our 
development of our, our site right here. And so I will make a PDF of it available and on the Moodle website so you can refer to it frequently as you go through development.